Howdy, I'm Mikey. And I'm Avery. And welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript explores effects of climate change on our weather patterns. Talks to the girls lacrosse team. And sits down with a few biracial students and families. President Trump welcomed three Americans freed by North Korea at Andrews Air Force Base early Thursday. The men were released during a visit by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in advance of a summit between the two countries to discuss North Korea's denuclearization. The White House called the release of the prisoners a gesture of goodwill before the June summit. Hawaii National Park announced Wednesday that it would temporarily shut down due to the likelihood that the Kilauea volcano will soon erupt. Magma has already begun draining down the volcano's side toward a residential area, and lava has destroyed 36 structures so far. The last time a similar eruption occurred was nearly a century ago. 2,000 residents have been asked to evacuate the area. On Tuesday, President Trump announced that he was withdrawing from the Iran nuclear deal. In his address, the president called the deal brokered under President Obama horrible and one-sided. Leaders from the United Kingdom, France, and Germany urged Iran to uphold their end of the deal, despite President Trump's intention to reimpose sanctions. The Iranian president will send envoys to the European powers to discuss preserving the pact. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. Every year, as summer rolls around, people around the world, and it seems like especially in Northampton High, begin to seriously feel the heat. But are our summers actually getting hotter, or does it just feel like it? Last year, Boston was ranked with the highest temperature in the month of February, reaching up to 71 degrees Fahrenheit. I sat down with Michael Rowling to see how climate change might be affecting our weather patterns. Well, climate change, uh, has been changing over um, the last few uh, decades, last couple hundred years, uh, and that's mainly due to human activities. And the principal way we know that climate is changing is we see that air temperatures are warming. There are other climate changes we're seeing, uh, including increases in extreme precipitation events, lengthening of the growing season, extreme drought, and these climate changes are all being driven by um, the increasing uh, fossil fuel emissions due to human activities that are increasing atmospheric greenhouse gases, which are in turn warming the planet. Many are looking for important ways to slow climate change, combat carbon emissions, and prevent the planet from future catastrophic disasters. On Sunday, April 15, 2018, preservationists spoke at the Hitchcock Center for Environment about Massachusetts forest loss and how it has a significant effect on climate change. I sat down with environmental science teacher Dan Moylan to discuss how he teaches his students to be aware of climate change and continue his action. So when I teach about the climate change, I start with a basic understanding of the greenhouse effect, greenhouse gases, and how that traps energy in our atmosphere. And that trapped energy increases uh, average temperatures and increases the amount of humidity that the air can hold, and that also impacts weather and climate. Well, cold temperatures, like a really uh, cold day on a, on a spring day where you'd expect it to be sunny and warm but it's actually snowing for some reason. Um, that's considered weather. That's really short-term uh, precipitation temperature patterns. But when you talk long-term over 30 or 50 years, uh, that's climate. And so when we say that climate is changing, you have to look at at least a 30-year pattern to decide whether climate is changing or not. A freak cold day or a freak warm day um, is not really climate change. That's weather. So we're talking long-term trends that are changing. We're also working in partnership with um, the Arcadia Wildlife Foundation in East Hampton off of an NEF grant, and that is ensuring that all ninth grade students in the high school get access to climate change curriculum, and they also have a two or three day uh, special uh, instruction from Arcadia staff. Climate change is expected to have a huge impact on Earth if we don't do something about it soon. Wetter, warmer winters, heavy precipitation, and thunderstorm events are expected for the future. I encourage you to think twice about what you can do to help minimize this impact. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Every few years in the life of a sports team, there comes a time when many of their players leave, 
whether it be to go off to college or because of other commitments. The loss of many seniors and their head coach set back the girls lacrosse team at the start of the season, but opened the door for the four returning seniors, three juniors, and eager freshmen. The season has already been filled with lots of individual accomplishments, such as Abby Baldwin's 200th career goal and multiple team wins for first-year coach Jordan Daniels. To learn what it's like to be on this young team and what they'll take away from the senior class, I talked with freshmen Sophie Bennett and Shay Crowther. The competition has definitely been a lot harder going from um, middle school to varsity. Um, I don't know, we've all been, we've been a team for a while. We've been a team for a while. Yeah, together. like the freshman class. And also the competition, like we have a lot of talented teams in Western Mass, like Longmeadow and Minichog and Agawam. They all have players that are going like D1. The senior class this year has definitely um, helped us a lot. They've given us a lot of constructive criticism that's helped. And yeah, and as seniors, they know that there's not a lot of people that have played at this level before. Like you said, they have there's lots only of six. Patience. Yeah, because we're not really experienced. We came from middle school. A lot of the seniors have a lot of experience and it's really helpful for us just having people that are on the field that know yeah. I guess what what exactly to do. Uh, well, I think we just hope that we grow as a team together. Despite having a fairly young team, Girls Across has maintained a strong group of leading seniors. One of four seniors, Abby Baldwin, is certainly leaving her mark on her high school career, already reaching 300 points and 200 goals and counting. I sat down with her to discuss what she is hoping to accomplish in her next four years playing at Mount Holyoke. I've had four coaches in the past four years, so that can be kind of a challenge, but I've really, really liked Jordan. She's younger, so she has a kind of a newer um, take on things because she played in college and was playing like fairly recently. What attracted me to Mount Holyoke was that I will have the ability to play both field hockey and lacrosse. And also another huge factor in that was that my parents are able to watch my games, which is really important to me and I know it's important to them. I just want to take it each game at a time. I don't really have any expectations going into it. I just want to work hard and, and get better and hopefully make a positive impact in the program. You can come see the girls lacrosse team face off against Longmeadow today at home at 4 o'clock. Softball also has a home game today at 4 against rival Minichog, and boys tennis also plays Minichog today at home also at 4 o'clock. Boys lacrosse is away at 4 in Agwam, and boys and girls track meet has a meet today at 4 and tomorrow at 9.30. Thanks for watching Hamped Up, I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, my name is Odette Bennis and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It. Northampton is home to many families that come in all forms, whether they be biracial, foster, adopted, or more. So this week, I sat down with high school students Indy Francis, Amina Mekelsam, Nasir and Talib Mohammed, and their families to explore the challenges, perks, and realities of biracial families in this community. We were together for 25 years, and we met in um, the Caribbean on a high school exchange program. My dad came here when he was a teenager, so um, I think there's not really that much of a difference in cultures at my house. I met their father in high school. We, we went to high school together. I was a freshman and he was a junior. So my family is just like straight from the Dominican Republic and um, most only speak Spanish or better Spanish. And their father's side of the family speaks no Spanish. So, um, it, you know, it was just mainly the, the language barrier. My family never blatantly discriminated against um, their father for being black, but there, there, was, there was a lot of smart remarks. I'd say that because I'm, I was raised in such a white area that I feel more connected to being white, but it's also like a tricky question because if someone sees me, they don't think white. You don't really see yourself um, in media, and also it's kind of hard um, sometimes because you feel like you don't connect with either side because like you're too white for to be black or too black to be white. I think the hardest thing growing up as a mixed race person was just trying to identify with a single identity because that's so much easier than trying to be two things at once. Um, I don't really categorize it like you know like as black and Hispanic. I just like because I'm black and Hispanic so I just like I feel like I don't know. I feel like I'm one, 
I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I think they, they feel comfortable until I have to take them to, like, my family side of the family, a family function, and then that's where the cultural... Is. Like, you know, everyone mm-hmm. speaks Spanish, and like, the music is just different. Yeah, yeah. and then... <laughs> <laughs> well, the hair wasn't a big issue. I just enjoyed braided their hair and, you know, having fun with it. We had to deal a lot with the police pulling over my ex all the time, you know. As, as a black man, we, he definitely was targeted. Uh, by the police. They got the first hand experience of being stopped in the car yeah. multiple occasions. <laughs> um, I did talk with your brother, your older brother, about um, not blasting music going through town, you know, trying to use good manners and common sense and not, um, not engaging at a certain level so that he, it didn't escalate. I don't, I don't really like them being outside late or whatever and um and then it's funny because when Har- when we're in Harlem or in New York City I don't like them being outside late because you know there's just too many distractions and, and and a lot of just shit going on and you get into trouble it's easy for you to get into trouble but like out here in Massachusetts I don't want them going outside late because someone might shoot them for trespassing what I wish more people would understand about biracial families um specifically our blend black and Dominican is that you know, we're all black. <laughs> it's still black. I wish they like understood why we like, for example, why yeah, we mad. are who we are. Yeah, why we are who we are, like, you know? I would say that my grandma's uh, sweet potato dumplings <laughs> are <laughs> the main advantage of being a Caribbean. <laughs> Growing up all white or all black, I feel like I would have been more biased and like it would have been a very different life experience. And so I kind of appreciate being who I am because I, I have understanding of of like both sides of history. Biracial families are just like any other family and there's like, I, there's no right or wrong way to have a family. A special thanks to the families for welcoming the transcript into their lives and homes. I'm Odette Bennis and this was Hit It or Miss It. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Mikey and I have spent the last semester working to bring you segments on the transcript each week. It has been a truly wonderful experience and we encourage everyone to apply to work on the transcript next year. You can pick up applications outside Jeremy Whalen's room. Also, head over to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's online extra. Being vegan and being an artist and like having, having communal spaces where I can be, with other people, like-minded people. Mm-hmm.